Now, everybody who's watching, let's get RBT to 500,000 subscribers by Christmas. He's the best Madden scientist there is. I subscribe to him, and if you don't subscribe to, your favorite team is gonna lose to the I'm not saying that team. Look at him, he's back. He's back to attempt the hardest rebuild that you can possibly try to achieve here at Madden 20. Mr. Bubbles, legend himself, is gonna take on a legendary task. So we try to rebuild the Miami Dolphins. We start in regular season week number 16 as we pick up where the Dolphins leave off in real life. As today, my dude, it's the first rebuild in a long time as yes, we're attempting to rebuild the Miami Dolphins. Mr. Bubbles is in for a long one and so are we. Hence why I don't have on my face cam because it more than likely will probably give me a migraine with the light on for over four or five hours trying to rebuild this team. But yes, my dudes, we are not going to finish today's rebuild. Today's video is not gonna end until we win the Super Bowl. To the draft, to the trades, although it might not be completely realistic, we're gonna do whatever it takes to bring this Miami Dolphin team from being one of the biggest laughing stocks currently in the league to Super Bowl champions. So hope you guys do enjoy today's video. And if you do, make sure to smash that like button. If we can get 5,000 likes on today's video, yes, I will attempt to once again do the impossible and rebuild a zero overall team. Last time I did that, it took me over six hours. So if you want me to go through that gruesome pain for a video, if we do get 5,000 likes, I will attempt to try and rebuild a zero overall team. Also guys, make sure to subscribe if you are new and turn on the notification bell if you haven't, because we've extended the deadline. If we do hit 500K by New Year's, I'm gonna be doing a mental giveaway for Xbox One X's and for PS4 Pros. We'll be giving away to you guys. That's if and only if we do hit 500K by New Year's. If you wanna go ahead and enter that giveaway, it'll be on my Instagram later today. I already have the three Xbox One season 3 PS4 Pros to give away, but I'm going to wait till January 1st for you guys to enter just in case we do hit 500k to up it to 4 Xbox One Xs and 4 PS4 Pros. So make sure to take that millisecond that it does take to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Now where does this team currently sit? A 72 overall, 69 offense, that's nice. 77 defense, obviously not a very talented team. A team that's going to take a huge project to win a Super Bowl with. The offensive line, the whole offensive line's got to go. I mean, Gusecki, he probably can stay for the entire rebuild. I mean, he's a young tight end. I mean, he could be solid and, like, improving to the 80 overalls. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he might, you know, be a gap quarterback, depending on what's going to be available in this upcoming draft. I mean, if we have, like, the number one or two pick, and there's a quarterback I think is going to be the QB of the future, we'll go ahead and grab him. But if not, I don't want to waste the pick on a quarterback that's not going to be good for us moving forward. So he could be a decent bridge QB. This running back, he, he's not going to be good enough. Devontae Parker, he probably can be good enough for the entirety of the rebuild. Maybe even Albert Wilson State is like a number three receiver. But we've got to improve this offense as a whole, especially this O-line. I might draft an entire new offensive line this offseason. Might, like, obviously sign some free agents as well. This team has a lot of cap room available, so don't want to waste it all. The linebacker core, it's okay. I mean, McMillan, Baker, and Taco Charlton, they're all probably going to progress up into the 80s, so they could be okay. They're not the first thing we need to replace. Now, safeties, yeah, we definitely got to replace them. We have Rashad Jones, but he's older, he's going to begin to regress. This D-line's okay. The main thing is the safeties. The secondary has to be improved. Offensive line. A lot of these guys in the D-line are pretty young, so they're not the number one cause of concern, but it all depends on what we can get in offseason free agency and what we can get in the draft to see what exactly we begin to replace, because really, at this point, not one player in this entire team is irreplaceable. Nobody's untouchable, so it just all depends on what we can get in terms of value moving forward, because I want to make this team Super Bowl champions within five years. And with that said, let me go ahead and just simulate to the end of this season and see what draft pick we end up with. So Mr. Bubbles likes to apologize for the quick interruption. Simply put, YouTube likes to cut me on these longer videos with music. So simply on this video, I, I hate it, but there's not going to be any more music. I, I don't know why it's the case, but YouTube hates me. So I apologize. There's no music from now on. So we ended up winning one more game. Ended up 4-12 and on this season. Ravens best record in the league at 13-3. and Worst record in the league ends up going to the Bengals. So we're going to have the third draft pick. They ended up winning one game. Probably was against us. Giants will have the number two pick. And Dolphins, we will have the number three pick. Depending on what QB is available, I might go ahead. I might try to trade up for the first pick. Now in terms of statistics, who ended up winning the MVP this year? It's Lamar Jackson, of course. Deshaun in second. Christian McCaffrey in third. Right out the top 10, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Let's go with the Rookie of the Year this year. And the AFC goes to Josh Jacobs. Defensively goes to Josh Allen. NFC goes to Nick Bosa. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kyler Murray, of course. Now with that, let's see who ends up winning the Super Bowl this year. It's got to be Ravens and Niners, right? It's got to be. One of those two teams. It's No, it's going to be the Patriots and Packers. 
Roger Goodell would love this one. Tom Brady, maybe his final swan song versus Aaron Rodgers in Super Bowl 54. Madden 20 thinks the winner's going to be the Patriots big time 28-14. to So with that said, got to make some decisions here. 16 players ready to renegotiate their contracts. And is there anybody I actually even want to re-sign? Is there anybody worth it here? I mean, really, no. I mean, really, not one of these guys has to be re-signed. I mean, we might as well try to re-sign these three guys since they're over 70. I mean, we got to keep Matt Hack. He's a legend. Like, Eric Rowe, he could be a solid backup strong safety. Maybe we could trade him on for somebody. Like, I don't want to, like, offer him way too much money. A four-year deal. He's going to test free agency. I really don't care. Matt Hack, what about you? Just give him, why not give him a five-year deal? I mean, a 73 overall, 26-year-old punter is not bad to have in the organization. He's going to stay. Last but not least, Mr. Vince here. He's a 72 overall right outside linebacker. Give him once again. I mean, why not just give him a long deal and keep him along for around for longer? That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. So two of the three players decided to resign. All these guys, they're freaking trash. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anybody. I think all these guys, yeah, they're definitely not worthy to be re-signed. And we have 80 mil in cap room that we can use in free agency. So I'm going to like not waste the money, but at the same time, put good use to it. We don't have to spend it all at one time, but still, I want this team to be as good as they possibly can be ASAP. So what free agents do we have available here? We have, ooh, Chris Jones could be solid. Kendall Fuller as well. I mean, we could have him and Xavier Howard as our one-two punch at the cornerback position for years to come. So I might go after him too. Kareem Hunt for sure. I mean, if we can go ahead out of free agency and get ourselves a face of the freaking offense for years to come, because he'll probably get up to like 95 overall. I mean, why not? He has no offers either. So we could possibly get him for relatively cheap. Drew Brees. Oh, that's a tough one. Do we grab Drew Brees? And then maybe, like, draft a quarterback to sit behind him. And if there's not a good quarterback, we have him as a bridge QB. That's such a tough one, dude. So let's see who we're going to offer. I'll let you guys know. So we did go out and make quite a few offers. A lot of them are just lowball offers. First of all, Chris Jones. I mean, why not with all the cap space? Why not try to get a centerpiece of what could be a potential championship-type defense? I mean, we have the cap space. Why not put our name in there? Kendall Fuller, I really want him. Put a good offer in for him. Kareem Hunt kind of lowballed him because nobody else is looking at him. Same thing with Andrew Whitworth. Our whole entire offensive line needs to be replaced. So if you have a guy like him, just kind of bridge the gap, like I said, to maybe even some more younger players, another draft, go ahead and grab him. A low ball to Emmanuel Sanders. He could be a nice number two, three receiver for a few years to go. Low ball to Mackenzie Alexander. He could be another solid cornerback, too. I mean, he would be a solid number three cornerback. Him, Xavier Howard, and Kendall Fuller would be a sick one, two, three punch at the position. And then Von Bell. I mean, another low ball offer for him. I mean, he's only 25 years of age, 78 overall star development. He could be extremely solid. Rashad Jones. I mean, he's 32 years old, only 76 overall, and his contract is huge. So, I mean, if we could get Von Bell, that would be big. I actually want to offer him a little bit more than what we are, because I want to make sure I get him. He's a could be a pretty big piece of this defense moving forward. So, with that said, hopefully we can get, like, maybe three or four of these guys. I wouldn't expect any more than that. I mean, anything does help this team. Kareem Hunt accepted that such lowball offer. Kendall Fuller. Mackenzie Alexander, they all signed. Chris Jones didn't, but I don't mind it at all. Some big additions. A star running back, star corner, number three corner. God dang, did this team right off the bat already a huge improvement. Oh, no, Von Bell rejected. That's unfortunate. So let's go ahead and see if anybody will accept for the next week of free agency. They both rejected, which I don't blame. It was a really, really low ball offer. Now with that... Time to jump into the NFL draft and see what we can do here. I want a quarterback. I want some help in the offensive line. First of all, let's check out the free agency recap, though. League signings. Chris Jones went to the Titans. Austin Hooper to the Cardinals. Kyle Van Noy to the Jets. The Cardinals got Andrew Whitworth. Yannick Ngakwe to the Broncos. Marcus Peters to the Buccaneers. Manuel Sanders ended up going to the Raiders. I don't blame him taking the much better offer. But with that, it is time for the NFL Draft. Hopefully there is a beast at the QB position here that we can have for this franchise moving forward. As Let's see. View the draft board. What do we have up here? Oh, man. There's no quarterbacks. There's no quarterbacks at all. Oh, oh, God, dude. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Like, what player is even out there that we could use? A strong safety, Cedric Gage? That might be the move. He might be the move because we need a strong safety. We did not get Von Bell. He's one of the top guys on our board. Christian Hoffman, a 5'9 deep threat. 
He doesn't even look that good. Yeah, for sure. Maybe like we go after Clay Ward. It all depends who falls to us. If we can get this strong safety, he could be a corner piece or building block on that defense. So hopefully the Bengals don't get him. The Bengals, oh my God! Of course they do. Bite me. God dang it, man. They get a 74 overall tight end. So, oh, of course they have to get the one player that I want. Now, do I get, I'm not getting a tight end. Like, do I go D-lineman? We have some young defensive linemen. This defensive tackle looks so good. Richie Mims, or maybe this left tackle. Maybe we go, We I think we actually need to build this offensive line as much as we possibly can in this first draft. So we go after that left tackle. This center looks really good, too. Maybe we can get him later in the first round. I think that's the move. The left tackle, Clay Ward from Penn State. I love that face. He's going to be a beast. He's going to be a 76 overall with hidden development, so at least superstars. So that's not a bad pick at all. The sixth-ranked player, and keep in mind, one of the top five players probably could have not had, like, superstars. They could have had normal. So that's not a bad pick. Not mad at that at all. Now, advancing, we have three picks in this first round, which are going to be huge for us moving forward. Now, who do we get, though? Do we just, like, grab ourselves a ton of offensive linemen, if available? So looking at the old line, what is left here? Maybe, is that center left? Oh, he is. I think we get him A minus, A minus, A minus. He's got to at least be in the 70s, right? I mean, I'll take anybody in the 70s here. I mean, that's really good top three skills to have. I'm going to grab him. He's going to be a 74 overall with hidden development, which means he at least has superstar. Could even become a superstar X Factor. So I'm extremely happy with the first two picks that we made. I mean, already, they're going to be absolute beasts compared to what we had last year. So we have one more first-round pick. Do we just go offensive line once again? A 67 wide receiver just got picked. Poor Vikings fans. Like, this linebacker looks pretty good, but I, I don't know what to get here. Wide receivers, maybe we get a Kent Fitzpatrick in the second round. Any good offensive lineman that we had graded in the first round? Casey Duran looks good. A- minus pass block finesse and A- minus impact block. Is that the move? Oh, we have Steven Stanton. He looks extremely good. We get ourselves two tackles. We have him graded as an early first rounder. He's extremely athletic for an offensive tackle. We'll draft him. A 76 overall, dudes. Let's freaking go. The number one ranked player in true value. Yeah, I know he's only normal development, but to get this guy the number one ranked player late in the first round, we needed offensive line help. Dude, that honestly, aside from like not being able to get a quarterback, is the best possible scenario we had. So, oh my god, dude, what a freaking draft up to this point. I mean, we did miss on that strong safety, but getting the O-line help that we've had is huge. So, in terms of other offensive, do we just, like, get a full offensive line? Like, this guy looks good, B-plus across the board. This right guard, these right guards look pretty good, too. Like, what else is there out there that we could go after here? There's some good D-tackles, but that's not a huge need. Linebacker, anybody good here? This guy could be solid, but maybe get him later. Cornerbacks, there's some solid cornerbacks. We have three good cornerbacks on the team now. Good free safety, Stanley Cohen. Oh, but free safety is not the worst position on our team. We have two solid free safeties. So do we just completely rebuild this offensive line? I mean, do we just go ahead and do that? One of these guys? Do we get Connor Weston? We have him graded as a first-round talent. I think we get him. We have him graded as a late first rounder, and he's going to come in at a 71 overall. He only has normal development rate, but that could be improved. I mean, it's a huge improvement from what we had initially in this rebuild. So this has been a huge, dude. We can get one more offensive lineman and have a full offensive line made up of rookies. They're all just going to get better as their career goes along. Like, he, he's still there. Is he still there for a reason? Is there any really good offensive lineman? I mean, I'm sure one of these old linemen we could, we could get later. Like, I want to get one skill position player. We didn't get any wide receivers in free agency, so maybe this guy could help out our QB. Kent Fitzpatrick from UTSA is going to come in at a 67. Okay, so maybe we should have got one of the offensive linemen. So that was our first real dud of the entire draft. So this is the last draft pick I'm probably going to show you. Let's see if we can get one more really good offensive lineman. Like, we still have these guys. Like, these guys look like they could be good. Like, oh, which one do I go after? I think I'm going to go with Paris Butler. Paris Butler, so with this pick, we'll have a full entire rookie offensive line. 
and he's a 71 overall, the 24th best player, and we get him at the start of the third round. So I know this doesn't seem like a crazy pick, but in the fifth round, we got Dennis Wynn, a 66 overall in the fifth round, the 90th ranked player. I mean, that's not a bad pick. And dude, we just got a 68 overall right guard rookie, so we have six offensive linemen that are rookie, but we got the 46 ranked player in true value. Literally, I think this is the end of the fifth round. Once again, another really good pick. Another young D tackle, Manny Colson, a 68 overall, who he just got in the sixth round. The 43rd ranked player in true value. We're going to draft ourselves a kicker. Which one do we go with here? Don Ray. Or Parker, it's got to be Parker Bartholomew. Yeah, dude, Parker freaking Bartholomew. Yep, he's going to be our kicker for the duration of the rebuild. I don't care if he sucks. Parker, 68 overall. Dude, Parker Bartholomew, that, this guy already a Miami Dolphin legend, an icon. So I'm not going to lie, that was an extremely successful draft because we literally got four rookie offensive linemen all over 70 overall. If I'm not mistaken, two of them have probably superstar or superstar X-Factor ability. So that was insane. We got a, I mean, an okay wide receiver. I mean, he's probably not going to be anything great. Nothing better than probably a third wide receiver. A couple really good defensive tackles. And got ourselves a kicker for the rebuild, Parker Bartholomew. The only thing that upsets me is the fact that we missed out on that strong safety, but still this draft was insane. I mean, it wasn't a draft with that much talent. I mean, there was literally only one seventy-seven overall player. So right off the bat, looking at the team, it is so much better. We have an entire rookie O-line. We're up to a 76 overall, which is much better than what we were last year. Still a solid tight end. Wide receiver, they're still all right. Kareem Hunt's going to bring the running game to another level. Ryan Fitzpatrick's all the way down to a 66. So I might go ahead and trade for... I'll see what I can trade for. Probably just a bridge gap quarterback that we can use him in the future if we need him. But if we also like can draft a young rookie, we can just trade that player away. And on the defense, the linebacker core is just going to get better, hopefully. Safeties are all right. The cornerbacks are much better than last year. The D-line is just going to get a little bit better as time goes along. I'm going to try to make a couple of trades, but not going to do anything too crazy. Well, didn't expect that to happen. Well, we add ourselves another young linebacker to our linebacker core. Rashawn Gary, last year's first-round pick for the Packers, coming over to us for the right guard that we drafted like the fourth or fifth round. We drafted at the end of the day six offensive linemen. This guy was a 68 overall. He's never going to start for us. Really, this was kind of the reason I drafted him, like to have his trade bait. And it worked out well. Get ourselves a nice young Rashawn Gary who should probably develop into the 80 overalls. But since we just got Rashawn Gary, that's a big reason why I did re-sign Beagle. 72 overall right outside linebacker, so I could do this. Trade him away for a first round draft pick from the Cowboys. We also had to ship on a third round draft pick. And one thing annoying in franchise mode, I forgot about this, the last rebuild I did, and apparently they haven't fixed it. For some reason, as years goes along, the other teams, they have literally no cap room at all. So it makes it so hard to make trades because even if a player you have is only worth like $2 million per year, it's like half the teams can afford them. Because as you see, like their cap room currently sits at like half the teams are like under one mil. So it's freaking stupid. So I don't know how many trades I'm actually going to be able to make, but I'm going to try my best. Talk about adding a beast young wide receiver to the squad. We trade away our backup right tackle Davis, who is worth like four mil a year. Preston Williams, who we no longer need because we have like four or five quality receivers. And Ballage, our backup running back, to the Atlanta Falcons for Calvin Ridley. So whatever quarterback we end up getting, rather it be a rookie next year, we have another extremely talented wide receiver to add to the core that already has Devontae Parker. So we do a little bit more finesse in here. We get a third round draft pick from the Atlanta Falcons for Alan Hearns and a fifth round draft pick. Only stupid thing about this was for the Falcons to be able to afford Alan Hearns because our cap room was so low. We had to throw in a couple players. I think made it a little bit harder to get the third-round draft pick. But eventually, at the end of the day, we get a third-round draft pick for a receiver that really wasn't going to do way too much for us. So we just did something absolutely insane. You might not know it, but the only team out there, there's like two or three teams that have over 10 mil in cap room, and one of them's the Giants. So we get our bridge quarterback, Daniel Jones, who could even be our QB of the future. We traded away Albert Wilson and Rashad Jones, although they were players that we were going to probably use this year, but that's because they are both over 10 mil per year. We definitely can find better value elsewhere. So basically, this is like a cap shed. At the same time, getting a quarterback that will be decent for us this year. It can even probably develop into the 80s later on in this career. Oh my god, dude, we just broke the game. We just got a huge piece for this secondary. Derwin James coming over to be our strong safety of the franchise. Rashad Jones is gone. We replaced him with Derwin James. We did have to trade away a few really good draft picks. A first and a third round draft pick from this year. And also Josh Rosen, who is going to be our backup. But we didn't need him when we could get Derwin James in return. I mean, I know it's a first and third round draft pick we had to trade away. But at the same time, we're really going to get a strong safety with those picks that were going to be as good as Derwin James. So 100% 
think this was worth it. We get a first round draft pick back, Van Ginkle, who is probably never going to play for us, only a 68 overall right outside linebacker, trade him away in a second to trade up into the first round and get the first round draft pick from the Eagles. We get ourselves one final first round draft pick, we trade away Igwoven, 68 overall outside linebacker, a backup, and a second round draft pick to get the Panthers first round draft pick. And I'm not even sure if they have Cam Newton anymore, so they might not be having that great of a season. Cam's down to a 79. So guys, look at that. We have 85 mil in cap room, and plus the team is already pretty freaking solid. We're up to a 77 overall with so much cap room. The only big problem is the quarterback position, but if we do go ahead and generate best lineup, will it go up at all? It stays at a 77, but this team is going to develop so much. It's such a young team with so much talent, with so much cap room. So if we can't find ourselves a quarterback with one of our picks in this upcoming draft, we'll be able to probably sign one or maybe trade for one. We won't close in the play left end over Avery Moss because he's a rookie. He's one of the defensive tackles we got converted in the left end, so we can actually start and maybe progress a little bit. With that said, guys, time to go ahead and simulate to the end of this first season, and I expect a pretty big improvement. I would say at least seven or so wins, maybe even eight. So we did make the playoffs, but I didn't really expect to. So it's not that big of a deal. Up to an 80 overall team, 80 offense, 81 defense. We ended up going six and 10. So it was a little bit underwhelming, but definitely improvements were made. Look around the league really quick. Best record goes to the, oh, that's hilarious. I thought they were going to do awful, but they go 13 to and one. So we're going to have probably the 32nd pick in the draft from them, but we probably could trade up, maybe get a top pick. Now, at the bottom of the league, the Vikings have the worst record. We're still going to get, oh, no, we traded away our pick. That sucks. But we probably could still trade up and maybe nab one of the top five picks if we wanted to. Check out the statistics across the league. Jacoby Brissett won the MVP with the Colts. Patrick Mahomes in second, Mariota in third. Do we have anybody in the top ten? Unfortunately, no. How about Rookie of the Year? We're probably not going to have anybody win it because obviously all of our guys were offensive linemen. So we did have Kim Fitzpatrick. The wide receiver we drafted come in eighth. On the defensive side of things, looks like we had one guy, Manny Colson, the guy we converted from defensive tackle to defensive end, come in sixth place. And we also had Dennis Wynn, I think another defensive tackle. On the NFC side of things, who's going to be beast now? Ishmael Slade. I was about to say, a lot of that was the strong safety that we missed out on. I was going to be mad. Demarcus Bowers, what a monster. Now, how did Daniel Jones do? We have to see, is Daniel Jones going to be our QB of the future? He had 4,000 yards passing, a lot of interceptions, though. Kareem Hunt, a decent season. And catching the football, Calvin really led the team. Now, I just, I don't know. Is Daniel Jones going to be our QB of the future? It all depends on what we can get in the draft. Now, how did our players progress this season? Daniel Jones, I'm expecting maybe like a 72, 73. 73, not bad. Offensive line's getting pretty nasty. Ward almost up to an 80. Same thing with Stanton. Gasecki's up to an 80. Devontae Parker, 82. Calvin really up to an 84. Kareem Hunt stay there at an 88. Just, I don't know what to do with Daniel Jones. We'll have to see moving forward. Now, the defense, linebacker core is definitely getting better. They all probably should be at least 80 or close to 80 next season. McCain, I don't know about him. I'll have to see what we're going to do with him. Derwin James up to a 90. Now, the cornerbacks are solid. D-line's going to get a little bit better. Probably going to look to sign a left in. I'm not sure if Colson will be good enough. It just all depends what's available in free agency and what is available in the draft. Parker Bartholomew was not our starting kicker. we got to get rid of Jason Sanders this offseason. So, MVP winner Jacoby Brissett and the Seattle Seahawks in Super Bowl 55. I'm expecting the Seahawks to grab this dub, see if they'll win. And they do. Big win. 35-21 in Super Bowl 55. Now, a lot of players ready to negotiate contracts. We have room to sign some players. Devontae Parker, he wants a three-year deal. The thing is, he's an 81, but he's already 28 years of age. So really, is he going to regress that much? I'll offer him like a four-year deal, but if he doesn't sign, it's not that big of a deal. We probably could get somebody better. He's going to come back. But depending on who we end up getting in free agency, he could end up being trade bait. Raekwon McMillan definitely got to re-sign him. Offer him even a six-year deal. Up that to like six mil. Up his signing bonus close to three. Hopefully he'll sign this. This would be a huge signing. He's coming back, thank God. Devon Godchow. Might be pronouncing his name wrong, but who really cares? He only has a one-year deal. We'll give him a three-year deal. I mean, he's solid. He's only 26. He could progress to be pretty good. Up it a little bit. Hopefully he'll resign, and he's going to come back. Who else we got? Taco Charlton for sure. Got to keep him around the squad. We're gonna give him a four-year deal. He's only 26 as well. Up that quite a bit. Hopefully he'll get up close to an 80 overall. He's going to come back. Anybody else I really want to resign? Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's going to go... And really, that's about it. So hopefully, I'm looking for a left in. That's the big thing I want out of this year's free agency. And maybe if there's a star quarterback, I get him some big money. We have 62 mil left in cap space. And Trent Williams available. Richard Sherman. I don't know about him. He's 
well over 30. Marlon Mack, don't need a running back. We don't need a cornerback. So there's really not many players that we could use. Unless there's like a solid defensive end that maybe we could add. Takaris McKinley. I actually tried trading for him. And we couldn't quite nab him. Now on the left side, who is there? I mean, it really doesn't matter if we can convert one to the other side. Olivier Vernon, Manuel Ogba, Willie Henry. I think we're yeah, for sure going to try to grab ourselves to Karis McKinley and let him play on the left side. So offer him a good five-year deal, make it seven mil per year, up that a little bit higher. Definitely try to bring him in. 96 total points, that might be enough to nab him. And aside from that, I, I really don't know if there's anybody I'm too interested in. I mean, I'm for sure going to look around, but I'm not going to do anything too crazy. One guy I do want to try to sign is Xavier Woods, a solid free safety. Bryce McCain's going to begin to regress, and he's four overall lower, and his contract's a lot higher, a lot more expensive than Xavier Woods. So maybe we could trade him on if some team can actually afford him. So we'll give him a pretty decent deal here. Give him, like, a cap pit of, like, 4.3 mil. It's a decent deal. 110 total points. So I think we should definitely be getting him. But once again, I don't want to be throwing around stupid deals. So we do get McKinley, and we do get Xavier Woods, our top two targets out of free agency. We do grab. There's one low ball offer I did send out there. Oh, you rejected it at Richard Sherman. No. I have a big decision. Fifth-year option. Derwin James contracts up. I'm thinking on working on a budget forecast. We need to start thinking about whether or not he's deserving of a long contract. Do you think he's worth signing long-term next season? Of course. Of freaking course. In that case, do you want to go ahead and pick up his fifth-year option? Of course. That's why I love that they added in this option. We did pick up his fifth-year option. This will postpone his contract negotiation for one year. That is actually huge. So with that said, I don't think there's any more offers out there in free agency. There might be, you no. Know, it's time for the draft, dudes. Got to get ourselves, hopefully, what will be a future star QB. Bro, what is that? <laughs> what the heck is that? The Chargers. It was the San Diego Chargers. They freaking moved to Mexico City. The Mexico City Conquistadors. Once again, man, there's just no real good QBs. I mean, maybe we go after this guy, Rhett Johnson, maybe in the second or third round. Aside from that, there's like really nobody that I even want. I mean, I think if one of these wide receivers fall to us, I might just draft one of them. We don't need linemen. We might need maybe a defensive tackle if there's any good availables. I really don't think there's any reason I should trade up, so I'm just going to take whoever falls to me. Thank God we didn't get that guy, Terrence Murdoch. He was the number one overall pick. Why is it always the player I look at is the number one pick? But I'm glad this time. He's only a 73. I really don't want to get a top five guy unless he's for sure over a 75 overall. There's been a couple 73s. Morris McAllister solid at a 76 overall. The Cardinals get alignment. Oh, 78 overall, Julius Hayward. Best rookie we've seen yet. The Conquistadors get a tight end, Grayson Silvers from UCF. Our pick's coming up, dudes. UCF has two top 10 picks. Dean Watts. I want to get that other wide receiver. Leonard Callaway gets picked. Next, Eric Parker. I want the wide receiver. To hopefully take over for Devontae Parker when he starts to regress. Here he is, Sylvester Landry, LSU guy. Hopefully he's going to be a future OBJ mid-first rounder. At least be a 75. Oh my god. I mean, that's not awful. I mean, do we just grab the best available player, get ourselves a nice solid backup running back, and if Kareem Hunt starts to like not play well? I mean, Greg Jackson, I mean, that looks solid. I mean, he's fast. I mean, why not have a nice one-two punch? He's a 75, hidden development. I mean, obviously could have gone anywhere else, but why not just get the best available player? This free safety actually looks extremely solid. Artavius Jenkins, another LSU guy. Did we get two LSU guys in one draft? I mean, a free safety, we could use it. Had a really good combine. He's not that fast, but he looks extremely solid. He's going to come in at a 75 overall. This might be my favorite pick we've had in the rebuild up to this point. These cornerbacks actually look really good. Clifford Garvin. Do I grab him? Oh, it's so tough. He had such a good combine. Why not grab him? We got to Kyrus McKinley in free agency. I mean, he's not an awful pick. I mean, we got, like, pretty much that's the value of the pick. Well, at this point, really hope our quarterback is still there. I wanted to draft. I haven't checked in a while. He's gone. God dang it. I mean, he probably wasn't going to be that great anyway. So I don't even know what to get at this pick. So I really just went through and traded away all my picks to get better picks the next year because it really wasn't anybody I wanted. The only thing, I mean, that's not a bad draft. I mean, Artavius Jenkins is easily my favorite player that we did get. 
Now, this wide receiver, he could end up being okay. And Greg Jackson, I mean, if we end up having to ship on Kareem Hunt, or if Kareem Hunt asks for too much money, he could be a solid guy to have there. We didn't really have a good, like, number two running back to, you know, take some carries from Kareem Hunt. So he'll be okay for our offense. Now, the only thing is I don't want to see that that quarterback we were eyeing that got drafted. Hopefully it wasn't like a freaking 80 overall or anything. Highest player was a 78 left guard. In terms of quarterback, that's okay. So the best quarterback in the entire draft was a 67 overall. So that really wasn't a big loss, whoever it was. So I think actually what I'm going to do here is I think I want Artavius Jenkins to be our free safety of the future. So I think I might actually end up trading away both these guys. I know I just signed Xavier Woods, but why not give the rookie a chance to shine here? But aside from that, heading into year number three, offensive line is going to continue to get better. Hopefully Daniel Jones will be closer to an 80 overall at the end of this season. Wide receivers are solid. We want a young first-round draft pick to get some time, so I might end up trading away Jakeem Grant. I don't think he's going to get too much better. Defense is getting better. Linebacker core is going to progress. Safeties are solid, especially with that young free safety we have. Corners are good. Defensive line is going to get better. So I think a few more moves in this team. I mean, it could be getting close to a playoff berth. So our number one position of need was defensive tackle. And why not add the best one currently in the league, Fletcher Cox, we had to trade Xavier Woods, but like I said, since we got that such good rookie free safety, I don't mind this. And it's really hard. I'm trying to get some first round draft picks in return. But once again, dudes, I can't trade away anybody that other teams won't because they're already like they don't have enough cap room because this game is so stupid. So I know our whole entire offensive line is filled with rookies, but trying to ship on McCain is almost impossible. And the best bet I had was to bring in Ali Marpet. So why not add one veteran in the picture when we have the cap room available at the left guard position and then take the lowest overall rookie that's not really going to play because Marpet's in and then trade him on elsewhere. Since that player won't be a lot of cap room, we can actually maybe get somebody else in return. It's just making it so hard that the other teams have like negative cap room already. So we're going to do exactly what I said. Ship on the left guard Weston who is no longer going to play because Marpet's now there. A second round draft pick and a fifth round draft pick to trade into another first round draft pick from the Cincinnati Bengals and hopefully just hopefully there's finally a QB that we can find for the future. Future, we'll be able to get them now. I'm not asking questions. Get another first round draft pick, this time from the Falcons. For some reason, they liked our young receiver Jennings, 69 overall, who's not going to get any playing time. Traded him a fourth and a second from next year for a first round draft pick from the Falcons, who I don't think is going to have a good season. So we get one final first round draft pick. No way we can get another one. Trade away Jakeem Grant so that rookie can step into that third wide receiver slot, a third from this year and a third from next year. Now we have third round draft picks, which will hopefully be enough to get ourselves a solid quarterback of the future in this upcoming draft. I do not get the Falcons' obsessions with our receivers, but Doss, who's like our fifth receiver now, to the Falcons for the third round draft pick. Time, boys, for season number three. Offensive line, solid. Almost everybody hopefully will be 80 or close to 80 at the end of this season. I know hopefully Daniel Jones can progress. The wide receivers are okay. Defensively, the team's looking a lot better as well, especially at the safety positions. Linebacker core is good. Defensive line now is extremely OP. Fletcher Cox and Godchow, absolute monsters on the interior. Cornerbacks are solid. Hopefully this year, dudes. I'm saying eight wins. So I don't want to say anything, but... It doesn't say practice squad players were signed, so we might have very well just made it to the playoffs with a first round bye. So I want to go ahead and look. We we went 12 and 4 already. We already went 12 and 4. What the heck is going on, dudes? So we already have a ton of players that can be upgraded here. Oh my god. Looks like Daniel Jones up to a 77 overall. So he might actually be our QB of the future. The team is up to an 85. 84 offense, 88 defense. How is this team progressing? I cannot believe it already doing this well. Offensive line, almost everybody except Butler is in the 80s. Gusecki up to an 83. Daniel Jones a 78. Kareem Hump to a 91. The Landry guy, oh, he didn't. I thought he was going to hopefully get up close to an 80, but he's 76. Not bad, though. Ridley up to an 86. Hunt to 91. This offense is insane already. The linebacker core is extremely good. Oh, my God, dude. The free safety has an X-Factor ability. He is a monster. Trading away our free safeties at the beginning of the year was definitely the move, especially with the fact that we got Fletcher Cox from doing so. Fuller's up to a 90. Alexander up to an 81. Garvin didn't get to play a lot, so maybe this next season we do trade a cornerback. That's if we don't win the Super Bowl this year because it's a possibility. You guys want to know why we did it? Because Bartholomew was our freaking starting kicker, man. He's too good 
of a story. Now, did we have a Miami Dolphin actually win the MVP? I want to see who we play in the divisional round. It's going to be the Browns, of course it is. We have some more upgrades. We have a ton of players who upgrade. Calvin really up to an 87 now, I think, with his morale boost. But let's see. Did we have somebody win the MVP this season? Now, let's check it out. Come on, Daniel Jones, number one. No, it's Patrick Mahomes. Of course it was. Looks like we had nobody in the top 10, unfortunately. In terms of Rookie of the Year, we had Greg Jackson win it. Our backup running back won AFC Offense Rookie of the Year. We had Landry come in fourth place. We're actually drafting pretty well, looks like. Oh, God, Zach Vick. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we had Artavius Johnson come in third place, so not bad at all. Also, Clifford Garvin. He was our fourth cornerback, so I don't know how he got up there, but hey, got some playing time. I mean, I can't believe, dudes, we're actually already going 12-4 and four on the year. Do we have the best record in the entire NFL? And we tied with the Seahawks and Texans as best records in the league. Worst record in the league, number one pick goes to the Redskins at 1-15. Now, last but not least, before we go to this playoff run, the individual stats this season, Daniel Jones, Four yards less than last year, but a lot less interceptions. I think that's seven less picks than last year, 27 touchdowns. Running the football, Kareem Hunt killing it. 1,200 yards, 12 TDs. Greg Jackson, seven TDs, somehow won the rookie of the year. Now, catching the football, Calvin really over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. Sylvester Landry on a bad year, 650 yards, four touchdowns. Actually did better than Devontae Parker. Now, defensively, who balled out on the defensive side of things? Jerome Baker, 100 tackles in terms of sacks. I'm expecting those. Takaris McKinley, 9.5. Fletcher Cox, only a 7. Most picks on the year, going to go to Raekwon McMillan and Jerome Baker. Can we win the Super Bowl in our third season, 2021? Can we at least not lose in round number one? And, oh my god, of course we do, by a lot. Well, it's the team that beat us, the Browns and the Giants, so... Daniel Jones's former team. Hopefully the Browns win it. They do. So at least we ended up losing to the eventual Super Bowl winner. But with that said, we have some players that need to negotiate contracts. Hopefully next year could possibly be our year. Calvin Ridley for sure going to try to re-sign. Gesicki for sure. Baker, Saunders. Oh, he can go. Bartholomew's got his spot. That's really it though. So I'm not even sure if we can re-sign Baker. Is he going to... I'm not sure if he's going to take this offer. I don't understand. I don't have the cap room to make this offer. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, we just lost Jerome Baker. Are you kidding me? So once again, cap room glitch, effing us over. So we literally don't have the cap room to sign anybody at all. So this is going to be the absolute worst offseason of the rebuild yet. At least we know we definitely need to go after a middle linebacker in the draft. So there's only a few good quarterbacks that potentially we go after. I think with him being the number seven guy and the second best guy on our board, I think he should follow us at number four. I mean, Lenny Blaylock obviously would probably be pretty good, but Sam Logan could be our QB of the future, as hopefully they don't draft him. Go on, Redskins, don't do it to us. They get Will Boykin. Oh, a 79 corn. That's extremely freaking good. So, come on, Greg Williams, free safety. Come on, one more pick, one more pick. Trey Wing. God, oh, no. Such a good middle linebacker, too. That sucks. That sucks so bad. Now, they're, oh, God, this guy looks so good, but I need a quarterback. But the question is, will, will Sam Logan fall to us? Will he fall to us? Is there any good middle linebackers out there? Oh, my God, we missed out on the best guy. Now, there's a couple of good guys later on in the draft. Like, this guy, freaking Glenn Perry, looks extremely good. But we probably could get him in, like, a late pick. But let's see, do we just go after do we get that quarterback now or do we get this guy? These two receivers look so good. Timothy Hills or Warren Hawker? They both look so freaking good. A minus catching. I think he's got to be the guy. He's got to be the guy. Timothy Hills, I mean, we could go ahead and trade Devontae Parker if this guy's a really good player. Come on. Come on. 76 wide receivers. Not a bad pick at all. Got some young beast receivers. Now we just need that QB to follow to us. Please, oh please, please, please still be there. Oh man, I'm scared to look in. Oh, he's still there. Yes, Sam Logan. Thank God. Come on, be like, at least if he's over a 70, his combine was so good. If he's over a 70, I'll be okay with it. Sam Logan, come on. He's a 73. We got our guy. We got our QB of the future. We can trade away Daniel Jones, Sam Logan. I actually, our quarterback runs a lot in the playbook that I use, so he's probably a lot better, especially being a scrambler. 
Let's go, dudes. I'm so freaking happy. That's that's honestly the best thing we could have possibly just done. I think I'm going to trade down because there's a lot of guys I want, but I think I could get them in the second round. So I'm going to take the Browns' second pick from this year, second pick from next year, and then their fifth pick from this year. So I think that that's a solid trade, I'd say. Like, I really want to get this middle linebacker right now. I'm scared he's going to get drafted, but there's, there's no way. He's a projected seventh-round guy. I feel like he, he'll be over a 70 overall. I'm pretty freaking sure. Do I go ahead and grab this guy to make sure I have a solid number two tight end? I mean, it's all about drafting for needs right now, and we, we need a backup tight end. I, I think, I mean, this is stupid. As long as he's over a 70, oh my god, that's a that's a, that's probably the worst pick that we've done thus far. All right, we're going after middle linebacker right now. We're going to get him. I don't care if he's projected seventh round guy. I, this is the biggest position we need to fill right now. Glenn Perry, don't be awful. Don't be awful. So, okay, so that, like, face value, that looks bad because he's 66, but he is going to be at least a superstar. So that's honestly really not a bad pick at all, especially this is at the end of the second round. This guy looks good. Bryson Duval in the fourth round. If he's, hey, a 68 in the fourth isn't bad. So I don't think that was a bad draft at all. I think Timothy Hill is going to end up being a beast. We got our QB of the future. Got ourselves a backup tight end that we needed. I mean, 67 could have been better, but it's it's not an awful pick. And this middle linebacker is going to be an absolute beast for us. Now, with that said, my dudes, let's see really quick, though. The other quarterback in the draft, there's no way he was that good, was he? The best pick in the draft, was there any 80s? No, there's a 79, a couple 79s. I really wish we could have got Trey Wynn. Other quarterback, though, okay, Lenny Blaylock actually ended up being extremely good. It was picked two ahead of us, the 78 overall. By chance, can we see if he was, oh, he's probably going to be, he's going to be so good. But you know what? We got a decent quarterback as well. 73 overall, Sam Logan. I mean, we could have got a lot worse than him. I think it was a really good draft, especially with him being a scrambler. Now the move now, we have an 85 team, 87 defense, 84 offense. We have to try to find a way to shed a little bit of cap room. So big trade right here. Devontae Parker is finally being shipped on. We get the fourth overall projected pick from the Bengals in return. We shed like 11 mil in cap room. I think this was a huge deal. Also had to trade away a second round draft pick from next year, but who cares? I was trying to get rid of Xavier Howard because he was worth 14 mil a year. And we get ourselves Evan Ingram. I know we had Gesicki, but now we, ha we probably can trade away Gesicki or keep both the tight ends. I mean, we still shed like 10 mil of cap room from this deal. So this was a million percent worth it. We are now going to run the NFL. Now with our rookie quarterback, he's going to have such a comfort blanket in Christian McCaffrey, 99 overall. Daniel Jones, we ship him on. Kareem Hunt, we ship him on. And yes, a high overall draft pick, but we got Christian McCaffrey, literally arguably the best player in the league to help out our offense now. And plus, he's cheaper than Kareem Hunt. So I think this, like, I'm trying to win now. I know we have a rookie quarterback, but he can easily develop into the 80 overalls and help us win now. So with that said, my dudes, it's time. This team, disgusting absolutely disgusting. We had to ship on a couple players that were going to start for us, but they were worth way too much money. And that's really important right now to have a lot of cap room to save. We're an 85 overall team. The team is mostly youngsters, so they're going to get better and better. I'm excited, dudes. Hopefully this is the year. Hopefully this is the year we can go all the way. So if my spidey senses are correct, it does look like we got another first round buy, which I'm actually kind of shocked by. For some reason, I thought we weren't going to, but let's just make sure we went 11-5, and five, so we went down just a little bit from last year, but that's understandable. Yeah, even with the young QB, we still go 11-5. and five. We're up to an 87 overall across the board with a ton of upgrades ready. Let's see here. If we upgrade all these players, our overall is up to now a 87 overall with an 88 offense, 87 defense. Hopefully that young QB is up to like an 80 overall or close to it at least, please. Up to an 83 already. What a guy. Dude, this is the year I'm telling you. I promise you if it's not this year, it's going to be next year. We have McCaffrey at a 99. Gabe Jackson behind him at an 81. So the running tax insane. Logan already up to an 83. Only one player on the O-line, not in the 80s, and that's Butler. Evan Ingram, a 92. The wide receiver core, it's extremely young. I mean, even Calvin Ridley's still young, but it's still really good. The defense is freaking good as well, my dudes. Mr. Perry, I don't even know what his first name is, but judging by that, I'm going to call him Gary Perry. Up to a 72 overall. He was projected to be like a 7th round pick, so he's done pretty freaking good. This, this whole defense is stacked. Maybe, just maybe, this is going to actually be the year. But let's see records across the league here. Looks like the Seahawks team to beat 14-2 and two on the year. Worst record goes to the Texans at 5-11, Rams at 5-11. Our rookie quarterback had to have won rookie of the year. And the MVP is going to go to Baker Mayfield. Matt Larson, a 74 overall in second place. 
Oh, Sam Logan came in fourth place in the MVP race. No freaking wonder he progressed so much. We didn't have our man, Mr. Bubbles, in second place for the Coach of the Year award. Matt Patricia with the Seahawks. How about Offense Rookie of the Year? Come on now, Sam Logan. I love it. The man, the myth, the legend. He's going to be a Super Bowl winner as a rookie. Now, already threw for more yards than Daniel Jones. 35 touchdowns, 7 picks, only sacked 33 times running the football. Christian McCaffrey, 10 touchdowns. Greg Jackson had 10 as well from the backup spot. Now, catching the football, Calvin Ridley led the team with 956 yards. Gaziki made a ton of catches from the number two tight end spots. This offense, kind of a shared offense, like shared receptions, but still balling out. And defensively, Glenn Perry, let's go, the rookie. It's Glenn, it's not Gary, but I'm still going to call him Gary Perry. 90 total tackles, most sacks in the year. Goes to Fletcher Cox, most picks, Raekwon McMillan. This is the year, my dudes. I'm telling you, we're going to get it done. Divisional championship game. Please be the Browns. Please be the Browns. And it's going to be the Browns. Let's go. Time for some payback, Cleveland. Bet to get a huge win here. Come on now. Playing this game at home. Huge win. 31 to 14. We have some more. Oh, it's just one player, Kylie Fitz, that we can upgrade. Playing the 9 and 7 Chiefs. Come on now. We've got to be able to get this one. Come on, Mr. Bubbles. Boom, boys. I'm so happy. A 10 point win. We might actually get it done. We have some more upgrades. A ton of players being upgraded as we head into the Super Bowl. It's going to be, though, against the Seattle Seahawks. Only lost two games all year long. Let's upgrade this final list of players. Oh, my Sam Logan now up to an 83 overall. Now with the morale boost, our team's an 88 across the board. That is insane. Absolutely mental. He's up to an 85 overall. Come on, I believe, Mr. Bubbles. Let's get it done in just over three seasons. Let's do it. Super Bowl champion, Miami Dolphins. I'm speaking into existence. Boom, a huge win. 28 to 14. Mr. Bubbles gets it done and places his name in the history books. Let's go, dude. I can't believe in his first year, Sam Logan led this Miami Dolphin team to a Super Bowl win. Oh, my. Oh, freaking my, dudes. I was so scared. I was going to have to do another freaking season. Let's look at these legends. Super Bowl champions. A ton of rookies, man. This offensive line been here since year number one. Mr. Logan ends his first year. I'd love to see this man's career, but unfortunately, this is where it ends. So many good young receivers. This defense, so freaking talented. At the end of the day, all came down to our Hall of Fame head coach. All hail Mr. Bubbles.